Hey, my friends, I hate to break this to you, but there's no such thing as best settings when it comes to sports photography. If you're new to my channel, thank you for checking it out. And don't forget to click that notification bell and subscribe so you can learn more about sports photography. And if you've been here before and you're coming back to check things out, thank you very much. I do appreciate you guys. As many of you know, I'm part of some sports photography forums and Facebook groups. And I've been there for several years now. And I've noticed one thing that's been coming through the feeds quite often. And it has to do with the comments that some photographers are receiving for critiques and also just on the images they're posting just to share. And that is, why were you using those settings? Those aren't the settings you should be using. I see that type of comment so often, it's really starting to frustrate me. And I don't want to be fighting back in the forums because that's just not my style. I do make some certain comments, but let's just set this record straight right now. There are no best settings in sports photography. Why do I say that? Well, because each venue is different. Each lighting in every gymnasium is different. The settings I use for my venues probably don't work well for the settings you're going to use in your venues. And now what I also notice, a lot of these comments are coming from the individuals who have tens of thousands of dollars invested in their equipment. They aren't just getting started. They've done this for a while. So high ISO to them is, you know, it's like a walk in the park. It's nothing big to them to worry about. But for some of those just starting out, they have lower end cameras that just don't do well in high ISO settings. And sometimes you just have to deal with what you have. And it's becoming quite annoying, as you can tell from me. When I get frustrated, I go to you guys just to let you know this is bugging me. And I have a feeling some of you are bugged by the comments as well. You'll post a photo and someone will say, well, why were you using ISO of 3200? Why didn't you bump it up to 12,800? Why didn't you do that? And why is your shutter speed down to 640? It should be up to above 1,000. Sometimes you can't do that. In fact, some gymnasiums I've been in, one section of the gym is nicely lit. Usually the center section around the edges, it gets quite dark. So while you may have your exposure set for the middle of the gym and maybe three quarters to three quarters, the outsides are just like, it just doesn't work. Those settings don't work, but you can't constantly be changing your settings for that. Many of the football fields that I shoot at, whether it's shooting soccer or football or some other type of event, the center of the field, the center of the field from like 30 yard line to 30 yard line is lit up nicely. You get some really good settings, get some high shutter speeds and freeze the action well. But it starts fading off when you get to the end zones. It gets very dark down there and it's one of those, well, which settings do I use now? I can't use one one thousandth of a second for my shutter speed. I can't have a low ISO. I've got to bump something up or drop something and what do you do? And that's why I say there are no best settings when it comes to sports photography. And that's why I'm telling you now, don't fall for the best settings routine. You should be using the best settings. Well, what are the best settings? Things change rapidly. Even if you're outside, sunny sky, next thing you know, it's like this. It's dark. Clouds have come in. No sun around. So what's the best settings now? Well, they're not the same I had when it was brightly lit. That just doesn't work. My exposure is going to be way messed up if I try and use the exact same settings. So... You have to change them so that your settings get back to this or relatively close to that. You just do the best that you can. And that's why I keep telling you, you know, you need to learn your equipment. You need to know how it works, what conditions it can handle and what it can't. So that when you're out there shooting, you can expect the unexpected and be ready for it. Because you never know. You might be shooting on field, say at a soccer game, nighttime. You got the lights coming down. You got the exposure set just right. And then something happens off field. Maybe a coach is talking to one of the players. That's going to be a great shot to put along with the story of the rest of the game that's going on. And you have to change your settings for that. So again, there's no best settings because you have to change. You have to adapt. So I'm just going to say it one more time. There are no best settings when it comes to sports photography. Gerg. Yes, that was a little grumpy, but I do get tired of the individuals who have the best camera equipment out there. And you know, you know what the best settings are. No, you don't. You don't know the best settings for me. You don't know the best settings for my friend right there or my friend over there. You know the best settings for you and the conditions you work in. But don't tell me these are the best settings. And if you're not shooting at these best settings, you're not a photographer. Now it's your turn. Do you agree or disagree with the comments I made? Do you think there are best settings or not? Let me know in the comments. And if you wanted to see another topic that was kind of controversial, got lots of interesting emails, check this video out here. Or if you're curious on my thoughts on what camera you should purchase, Check this one out. And as always, everybody, thank you for joining me and get out and shoot.